Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. If you were a soldier in the Army of Northern Virginia and were in the ranks at Appomattox, chances are the circumstances around that day, April 9th, 1865, are seared, indelibly etched into your memory. In his history of the 4th Alabama Infantry, Adjutant Robert Thompson Coles recalled the last day before General Lee surrendered his army. Coles was born in Virginia and living in Huntsville, Alabama at the start of the war. He began his service in the 4th as the regiment's sergeant major, proved an able soldier, and advanced to adjutant. He fought in most major battles with the Army of Northern Virginia all the way from First Manassas through Appomattox Courthouse. In this passage from the regimental history, Coles recounts the dashed hope that Major General John Brown Gordon's men would break the U.S. lines and an encounter with General Lee on April 9th, not long before he surrendered. So let's get into it. I'm going to read this passage to you. Quote, on the 8th of April, the 4th Alabama was protecting a battalion of artillery of our corps from the enemy on our flanks as we slowly marched. On the morning of the 9th, having marched all night, we had halted, waiting on Gordon, who was fighting desperately in our front in his efforts to cut a pathway through the enemy, who, by this time, had enveloped what was left of our army on both flanks, front and rear. Both Gordon and the rear of our corps were pushing the enemy back, drifting our forces farther and farther apart. General Gordon had broken the line in our front and was still driving the enemy, and we were expecting every moment to be ordered forward, being only a short distance in his rear. Finally, quiet prevailed both in the front and the rear. It was no doubt plainly evident to our general officers that our end was at hand, but we of the line never had the remotest idea of a surrender. We knew we were surrounded by many times our number. Still, we believed and hoped that General Lee, knowing so well his aggressiveness, would mass the troops he had left to him and break through the enemy's lines. Then, Rumors were whispered among the men, which had reached our ears from the front, that flags of truce were being exchanged, and this so much foreboded surrender that every man in the regiment was so overcome with disappointment and grief that they either fell down or leaned against some support and wept. The 4th Alabama was ordered a short distance to the front, while making the movement, General Lee rode by, going to the front, and just as he reached the head of the regiment, the report of a rifle rang out above the rear of the regiment. Quickly reining up old traveler, he inquired, who fired that gun? When told it was only one of the men who wished to clean out his rifle, General Lee remarked that he did not wish any more firing and continued on to the front. He was then on his way to Appomattox Courthouse to meet General Grant. This was the last time the 4th Alabama saw him. Late that evening, the report was confirmed that General Lee had really surrendered. Though young in years, yet old in war's terrible experience, through which few have passed, these ragged, half-starved, grim-visaged veterans were almost heartbroken. Orderly Sergeant Jim Franklin discovered that a member of the regiment had fortunately picked up a battle flag the last time we passed through Richmond and deposited it in his knapsack. This we substituted for our old bullet-torn one, which had waved over us continually from Seven Pines to Appomattox and placed it on the flagstaff to be surrendered. At the same time, we tore into small pieces our precious old rag and divided it 
among the men. Our pangs of hunger were very much reduced on account of our grief-stricken condition, the mortification of having to march up and stack arms in front of a host of men whom we had every right to consider, man for man, that we were their superiors from past experience on many battlefields was most galling to our proud spirits. So there you have the story passage from Robert T. Coles's Regimental History of the 4th Alabama Infantry. Coles talks about those last hours, those final hours, when the Army of Northern Virginia was completely, almost completely surrounded by the Union Army. I found it really interesting that he and the men that were in the front lines, separated from general officers, had no idea, no idea that a surrender, they still hoped up to the moment that they heard that surrender was inevitable and was about to happen. They thought that there was a chance to escape. They thought there was a chance to end. And the way that Coles tells it, it seems like the idea of surrender never even crossed their mind. And one other note, I've done other videos where we talk about the importance of a flag of the regimental and national colors to the regiment. It was the emblem. It was the symbol that they followed into battle. They followed it on the march. It was representative of the esprit de corps that they all shared in common, that love of regiment, the love of country, all in a symbol of the flag. How they tore up their old flag that had carried from Seven Pines to Appomattox, took it as souvenirs, and then substituted a battle flag they had found recently. So thanks for listening. Take care. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.